So are you and have you been buying the dip? Uh, that's sort of debate that's going on right now as things are dipping down. Um, I want to go over some of the headlines, some news with you guys. This is the daily news and let's jump right in. Um, so you can see here, retail traders ignore banking crisis and buy the dips in lenders. And um, some of the ones that we've been talking about here, you can see it's uh, Bank of America, so that's the black one. And you have um, Pink is Charles Schwab, Fourth Street Public and Citigroup. Um, the one thing I will say, it's funny, with Citigroup, you would think that it's undervalued if you look at the numbers of the thing, um, but it just never really moves. Uh, and that's Citigroup. Uh, Bank of America is like your bigger bank, and that's probably not going to fail. Charles Schwab keeps putting out PR that they're good. And First Republic, I think there's corruption over there. And who knows? It's up 10%, down 10%, up 10%, down 10%. Um, my opinion on this thing is I think a lot of it has to do with your age. So if you're older like me, and you see these banks doing crazy bank stuff, and you live through the uh, 08 um, financial crisis, you're a bit leery. If you're young, you're like, oh, you know, banks are coming back. We need banks. And I think that's what it is. It's really right. I think it's a generational thing. So I'd be curious you guys' opinions on this one. Um, I personally don't trust the banks, uh, but it is what it is, you know, and, and y'all got to do what you all got to do. Um, Western Alliance, they're saying here um, that uh, the key was that 68% of their total deposits are insured, okay? And that is up from 55%. And, and the reason why we're talking about this stuff is basically... The, the government's uh, talking about a couple different things. So one is, can we get people to trust the banking system, right? If you put your money in the bank, is your money going to be safe or is it just going to vanish? Or are you just going to go with bank a mattress? <laughs> it's a joke. Um, but, um, you know, this is sort of where people, you know, if you have a large sums of cash and, and your deposits aren't insured, meaning over the 250 k you're just like, you know what? I'm just going to throw my money like in a JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, like one of the bigger ones. Um, so essentially what you're doing, you're watching uh, if you are interested in the banks, um, how much uh, underwater are they on, say, some of their long-term uh, bonds slash investments? And also, to um, you know, are people uh, pulling money out? So Charles Schwab, you see reports that, you know, people are indeed pulling money out. And then how much of their in, uh, deposits are insured? There has been talk about raising the uh, FDIC uh, to higher levels. And then the other just talk has been like, okay, if we do raise it, say, you know, 500,000 or whatever we're going to raise it to, um, would that apply to all banks? Would we do different, you know, raises for depending on the size of your bank? And also too, we talked about yesterday, um, what's going on with future of regulation. So this is a complicated thing. The bank, the banks are always been more difficult um, than other um, asset classes, essentially in terms of like stocks. Uh, so this one, I'm always a leery about. This is my opinion on that one. And again, I think it depends on your age. Uh, in terms of the um, the sectors, it looks like we had a mixed day today. Uh, things that were up were utilities, healthcare, energy, computer staples, things that were down, consumer discretionary, industrials, info technology, stuff like that. Um, you can take a look at the heat map here. Um, the the big one to me, which I think is kind of the one of the keys to understanding the market, is what is Tesla doing? Uh, mostly because it's a popular retail stock and it's essentially the number one stock that you know retail investors buy. So it looks like people are getting out of Tesla. Um, I think I probably called the the top on Tesla correctly, but you know who knows. I did not call the bottom on it correctly, to be perfectly frank, um, because you know everyone's got to make a decision on what you think is is good. Um, one of the things I will say, and, and I want to go through some more stocks, but is I don't really quite understand um, internet uh, slash YouTube where people get so angry if you don't like their stock. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you know, we're talking about the S&P 500. There's like 500 stocks out there. It's like. You know, I like the stuff that I like. You like the stuff that you like, and you know it's fine. Um, you don't have to be angry uh, that if I don't love Tesla, and I'm not angry if you don't say love Visa. You know, I'm I'm not angry about it. Um, I, I think that you can certainly have a right to your own opinion, and it is what it is. Um, and that's sort of why I, I mentioned it that way is because for those of you who you know are interested in this stuff, when you look around, you got to decide. Okay, and this is for anything, not just stocks, or like you know, be it which job you take, be it which house you buy, these kind of things. You got to decide like what makes sense. For you and you don't have to buy everything and in fact you you can't necessarily just buy everything although theoretically yes you could and if you just buy index but i mean in terms of like you know allocating your money right you got to decide what makes sense for you um and so what's interesting is is so when i look back in the market i say okay i wish i would have done that i wish i would have done that or you know i could have done that but i i don't regret it and, and one of the things that is tough with the market if you guys know this just a long time is that you know there's always the the shoulda woulda could is um so for me um I'm just talking about hindsight 2020 um, so the meta one, when this one was crashing, I, I, I was saying on the channel that 
Um, if you were to take a bet, you know, you're betting on Zuckerberg and you're betting on that Facebook it makes money, and they do. So it wasn't a terrible bet. Did I expect Facebook to go from what, $100 to $200? Absolutely not. I, I did not expect this kind of run. So absolutely not. I, I can't predict the future 100%. Um, but I didn't think that was a terrible bet. Um, in terms of like, say, Netflix, which would have been a really good bet this year, when that was like just going rump down in May, um, I wasn't touching it. For, that was my opinion. So this is an example I'm just sharing with you guys. Like, I, I, I can't predict the future 100%. And the reason why the difference between for me for, say, Netflix or Facebook, I knew that Facebook was, was essentially a juggernaut. People are still on this thing. People advertising this thing. However, um, you know, I didn't think I expect it to double, uh, mostly because that we know that going to recession, then uh, companies are going to advertise less and ad rates are going down. And also, too, there's been a lot of sort of, um, what we're to say, uh, ill will towards Facebook. So I kind of just knew the negatives of it. But I didn't think it was necessarily a bad bet. Netflix, on the other hand, even though, yes, it had a massive recovery, um, I was like, okay, Netflix was overspending on content, um, you know, and I knew they were going to be cutting back. And also, too, I, I knew, you know, they're going to try to cut that whole patch uh, word sharing thing. I knew that uh, in other countries are facing more competition. It just didn't seem that attractive, just preferably frank. Um, it is currently trading at a PE of 37, and to me, that seems uh, overvalued. Now, the basic gist of it is, and every company you can look at different ways, but um, you know, you, you want to be in a reasonable PE. So you want essentially your growth rates uh, uh, in terms of earnings to exceed your PE. So you're thinking like, okay, if Netflix has a PE of 37, do I expect their earnings growth to be like, you know, 40, 50%? Probably not. So that's why it seems like it seems kind of ridiculously hot. And also too, uh, Netflix is sort of discretionary to where, you know, if things get tied in the household budget, people are going to cut their Netflix. But who knows? Maybe not. People are like, you know what? Uh, I will cut this, this, and this, but not cut my Netflix. So, you know, that, that, that's that's the predictions you got to make. And again, in anything in the market, um, I'm fine with you uh, doing well and investing with things that make sense for you. I just offer my opinions and sort of just ways to think about it. So like, for example, um, for us, uh, me and my wife and I, we're always watching the dollar. So the dollar has been um, pretty good to us <laughs> uh, up in the last five years at, uh, you know, 23% gain. And, and in fact, we had this crazy run up up here um, we actually converted a bunch of dollars. That was a good time. And then um, here uh, it went down and then it's coming back up again. So who knows? I know some channels keep saying the dollar is going to fall apart and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not so certain. My personal feeling is I would not bet against the dollar. Um, that's just my personal feeling on that. Uh, also, too, I, I would say that I don't think the dollar is ever going to go to zero. This is essentially um, the world currency. You, you use it to buy food and oil. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, it has been very, very volatile, though. However, I mean, I can still see this because, again, we track this um, one all the time. And it continues to show strength. Um, it's been crazy because, um, you know, when you're talking about the, the market as a whole, I'm just talking, you know, uh, some of the safer stuff, say something like a Costco, which is, you know, um, one of the more like in recessionary type stocks, you know, people are going to go there and buy, you know, stock up in lots of toilet paper, et cetera. <laughs> um, I guess they're just not growing their their sales. You can see here, lowest growth in um three years. And, and a lot of this stuff uh, could be essentially people are, are cutting back, but it's like, okay, they're even cutting back on Costco. So this is where, you know, I, I how can I say, it, it, I, I don't want to read the person that everything's going to go to zero and everything's going to fall apart. I don't think it's going to be like that, but but I don't necessarily think that growth is going to be there, right? So that's why I was talking about growth and PE ratios. So like that would say like your Netflix or, or your or your meta Facebook, et cetera. It's because Essentially, when you're talking about these kind of things, just talk about stocks, um, when you're investing, you know, in said things, you're investing in, okay, how are they going to do in the future? So, for example, Costco, they're not going to go out of business, but are they going to be expanding? Are they going to be growing, right? Is my investment going to be, you know, essentially uh, increased from what it is now? And since you're betting on, is a company going to grow? So that's what the name of the game is. Uh, on more mature companies, like I'm just talking about this stuff in general now. I like a Coca-Cola or Johnson Johnson, these kind of things. Um, you're investing them uh, just just to you know preserve wealth, and then they'll share some of their profits with you. Not necessarily a growth company; it's it's, it's a different uh, a ball of wax. Um, but in the difference uh, is is that you know in the past, um, the, you know a couple of years, everyone was like you know zero percent interest. Let's grow, grow, grow. You know all the growth stocks are uh, you know awesome. Um, but I just feel like you know growth is going to slow, and it's time to sort of temper down those kind of expectations. And as you know. Um, something like a Virgin, uh, Virgin Orbit uh, just declared um, bankruptcy. I, I was seeing that in there. They're doing some of the bankruptcy. Um, I, I didn't read too deeply in it other than I know I'm not touching it. <laughs> uh, there's some companies that, you know, the unprofitable ones that are like that, very speculative, are probably going to go away. 
Um, and whereas like, I'm not worried about Costco, Coca-Cola, you know, these kinds of Apple, I'm not worried. And so this is sort of where you have to, you know, essentially um, figure out, do what's best for you. And in my opinion, um, I would stick with stuff that's profitable. This is in my opinion, I don't think it's a great time to be in risky stuff. Um, I also want to make a correction about the um, a blogger person. So we talked about this one yesterday and I, I was saying, you know, um, free speech in, in Russia, et cetera. And there's a blogger that was essentially killed in, in a bombing. Um, it turned out that the, the blogger was, was saying all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I don't necessarily condone violence at all, but this person is crazy. And, and um, as how can I say, it? I do condone violence if someone's going to remove Putin. So I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to get in trouble with YouTube, but uh, uh, I, I um, just wanted to, to say thank you guys for the, in the comments and for, you know, Hey Chris, you know, that blogger person is maybe not so great. Uh, and I agree. I read more about it. Um, the blogger person in Russia is not so great, but I don't necessarily condone violence. So we guys understand my, my point of view on that. Uh, there's been a couple of the stories talking about violence, um, which, which is really disturbing. And um, I'm just putting the pieces together on stuff. Um, I, I don't uh, advocate any kind of conspiracy like that. I'm just saying that there's facts that are out there and you guys can decide what, what you think about for yourself. So um, this one was um, the Cash App founder, Bob Lee, I guess he was stabbed in San Francisco, um, essentially um, murdered. Uh, and, and this is kind of a, an odd time. When I saw this headline, I immediately thought of like what's been going on, if, if you don't know. Um, the uh, Hindenburg research came out, again, a short report against um, Square. And then the cash app part was like part of it to where essentially there was a lot of corruption where um, they were doing illegal activity or they, uh, not, not Square, but um, people were using cash app to uh, do things they weren't supposed to like for example getting a bunch of stimulus checks from the government and they have like you know 100 stimulus checks and i think there are other things that, that were going on with the cash app um and uh it, it's just it, i find it really odd and troubling that um you know you have this headline in the news we are in the short report and then you have you know essentially a, a murder in san francisco so you know who knows it could be completely random but i, I just i'm telling you it's it's there it's in the news it's the same way like this one um but the Peter Thiel thing, I, I mentioned this one a couple other times, and, and it's funny because I feel a lot of people don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but I just find it troubling. Um, Peter Thiel, if you don't know, he was the person who basically started the bank run over at um, Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, he's, he's you know, emailed all his, you know, billionaire buddies and, and founder buddies and stuff like that. Say, hey, get your money out, that kind of thing, and started the, the run, basically. Um, and then uh, one of his close associates um, recently died. And um, the, the the ruling, or not ruling, but the I guess the fact is he just, his associate fell out of the window and the associate was a, an ex-lover or something like that. You can read more, you know, salacious stuff about it. Um, there's been like, he, the guy lived in a $13 million home and I guess the old bought on $300,000 cars, this kind of stuff. And so, you know, you know, you make up what you want, what you will, but I'm just saying, um, I just, I just read facts on these things. And so it's like, okay, um, you know, I wasn't born yesterday. I understand the world is a, is a scary place. And so I just, you know, um, be aware that there are things that do happen with this kind of stuff. That's all I have to say. Um, and, you know, regarding rich people, this was an interesting one. Um, if, if you look at the Hamptons, you guys know what the Hamptons are. Um, uh, the, the essentially where all the rich people live in their big mansions um, uh, east to the eastern part of uh, Long Island, which is east of New York City or the city. And essentially, you know, people who are in the Wall Street game, these kind of people, they have a couple of homes, right? You have your penthouse in the city and you have your big mansion where you have all your parties and stuff in the Hamptons. And evidently, um, home prices are falling out there, which is really interesting. Um, I've heard this uh, in other parts of the real estate market um, in various world cities like Toronto is a, a good one to, to talk about. But basically uh, in the real estate bubble market, um, the uh, the most expensive homes are the ones that were really, really skyrocketing. Uh, evidently, they're coming down in price. So some of these are going to be down like 37%. That's Shelter Island. So boy, that's a big change in price, like almost 40% uh, drop. So I'd be curious if anyone was buying Shelter Island and now they're trying to get out of it. And um, you have other ones that are like 15, six, et cetera. So I guess there's some that are holding their value, which which is Sake Harbor, uh, that's still up. But um, home prices, the median sale price of these places are like two to $3 million. You guys can see that's the median price. So there's some that are much, much more, of course. Um, also too, you can take a look at this. Uh, this has been in the headlines as well. Um, for those of you who live in LA, you'll probably know about this. So there's gonna be like a um, a wealth tax on like really expensive houses what is this? So it's on, on um, Taxes on us, uh, uh, was it houses over five million? Right, it says a new law will impose extra tax on sales of more than five million. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, I guess a lot of people are trying to sell their homes before the taxes go into effect. Uh, so when is that? Uh, April 1st. So, I guess it's, yeah, I guess it's in effect now. Um, but uh, home prices have been certainly decreasing, and, and some of these homes are just like ridiculously expensive. 
Um, if you've ever been to LA, you'll see them up on the hill, um, you know, or you'll see them in movies, you know, like 23 million dollar homes example. I think the one in this picture is 141, but it's not like everyone has 140 million to one dollar home. It's not like everyone has that. You know, it's this is ridiculously expensive, and these kind of places are are like places of business. You have a parking garage and swimming pool, and you can host like a very very large party kind of thing, and you have staff. It's it's like a business. It's essentially your home. So anyway, those have been declining in, uh, in value. Um, regarding the Trump thing, I, I've decided I'm not going to make a um, full video on it. There's you you can find enough information on on the Trump stuff. Um, I'll just share my, my general opinion on these things, which I think is completely fair. Um, no one is above the law, and I'm fine with a, a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, or anyone uh, facing charges. And, and ultimately, if the if the court decides that they're guilty, facing said penalties, I think that's perfectly fair to say. And I hope that you all can agree that no one is above the law. That's it. And um, you know, my 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 other opinion on, on Trump is um, that he's got a whole bunch of legal problems to deal with, and you know. Good luck to you, Mr. Trump. <laughs> That's all I have to say. And uh, you guys may not know I went to school with Ivanka. Trump also went to my school um, near Shimon Savania. So I know these kind of people. And um, this is just this kind of class of people. They don't care about you, the regular people. And it always makes you feel strange when like people who, you know, Trump doesn't care about, like they actually think that he does. And and I know that, that, that I guess that there makes people really mad. But I'm just telling you, these kind of people, they don't care. They just care about themselves. And that this class of people, it's not you know, uh, it's not actually um, left or right. It's just a certain kind of people. Like we'll, we'll call it the wealthy business person that, that doesn't care about the little people. And, and I think that's a pretty fair thing to say. Uh, so we'll see what happens to him. Um, it is what it is. Um, there's been a bit of controversy over on Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk said, you know what? I don't really like NPR. I'm going to label it as, um, was it state affiliated media? So it kind of implying propaganda is sort of what they're doing with, with NPR uh, he took away the blue check mark from uh, New York Times recently. And, um, you know, guys, I do YouTube all the time. I do the news with you guys. And you may not know, I also work at the radio station. So um, I, I completely understand, like, the, the importance of, of good information. And hopefully you come to this channel for that. And also, too, for, for good dialogue with that community of people who, honestly, we, we care about the truth. I, I, I do. So I, I try my best not to just, just make up stuff. Um, and so this sort of issue of the whole you know fake news stuff like that is it's been a real problem in the in the world that we go forward because now it's just so easy to, to fake anything and and also too this is also very real there's some people that just like to make stuff up um that stuff always really bothers me and i don't care who it comes from just don't make stuff up <laughs> that's to say uh and and um you know I, I, it's so crazy i have to say that like don't make stuff up um and and you know we're, we're facing um uh sort of like a reckoning of of, of hopefully going back to truth in media. I really hope so. And if not, um, just hang on my channel and I'll try my best to be a, a beacon of, of hope uh, uh, for humanity. And uh, again, I, I always try to have a sense of humor about this stuff because um, I think the be, uh, in my opinion, to be successful in this world is have some humility. You know, sometimes you're wrong. Like I was wrong on the blogger thing yesterday and I quickly corrected today and that's fine. I'm, I'm more concerned about, you know, getting things right as best as I can, opposed to like, oh, you know, puffing out my chest and, and I'm never wrong. I'm not going to say that, you know, like I point out some stocks like, hey, that will look attractive. That one did look attractive to me. I was wrong. And and that's fine. And, and I think you know, my opinion on this stuff is, is, you know, the people who are so afraid that, 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 that someone's going to think that they're dumb or something like that, then they try to pretend all the time that they know everything. And, and, and I'm just telling you guys, I'm smart enough to know, I know, I don't know everything. And I'm also smart enough to know that you're smart and, and we have a great community that we share info. Like I said, and whenever I have a question about something, I ask you guys, I say, hey, what's your opinion? Because I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Australia. I don't know what's going on in New Zealand. I don't know what's going on in Finland. Like, I don't, and this is honest, um, Finland joined Norway. And I don't know what regular Finnish people think about joining uh, NATO, not Norway. Uh, Finland joined NATO. I don't know what regular people. And that's sort of why we have a community. And, and it's something I want you guys to develop over time is you have a trusted network of people to where you can get an honest opinion from someone, which I, I try to do, and it's um, not paid for by anyone. So hope you guys understand this, and, and I do appreciate you hearing me on my rambles here. But um, this was a bit of a big one, though. Uh, so the judge is saying um, that in the Dominion case, uh, that I guess Fox News people were, were saying stuff that were false, and, and, and it's going to go to trial. So Fox could be in real trouble here. Um, I'm not a fan of Fox myself, uh, mostly because they just make stuff up. <laughs> You know, I, it, it's and it's funny because it's not about their political bent, which I, 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 you know, you can have a any opinion that you want. That's fine, uh, but just don't just make stuff up, which they kind of do. And um, they, we're going to see what happens right now. They're they're um, in a defamation case against Dominion, and and um, it's sort of.
goes back to the Trump stuff. I don't talk about it too much, but again, court of law. And I think that we should all want truth and accuracy. I don't think it's a crazy thing to say. Um, like for example, um, Exxon saying, you know what? I don't think we're finding oil in, in Brazil. So headlines, Exxon quits drilling in Brazil. Um, I hope that one day we will quit talking about oil and, uh, be talking about other things. Um, I, and, but I do understand, um, there's people writing comments and I want to just reiterate, cause I can read the comments that, um, oil is used for a lot of things. I do believe plastics is one of them. So we will never get rid of oil entirely. Um, but I do think we can, we can lessen it. And also too, this is sort of like the example, uh, when I was a kid, uh, all the McDonald's had styrofoam. If you guys remember this stuff. And like, as it turns out, styrofoam is like terrible for the environment. And so, you know, now that the McDonald's is just using example McDonald's, you know, uses like paper and cardboard, which is way better. And, and I, I just want to remind you guys for people who are ever naysayers and say, oh, I'm never going to change. I'm never going to change. They do ultimately. Right. And, and I'm all about, you know, finding better ways to do things. So, um, and I think, I think it's fun to talk about this kind of stuff, um, because it also relates to, uh, investing is, is picking companies that you think they have a better way of doing things than another company. And I think that's fun to talk about. And that's why we do the news together. So anyway, um, they're not finding oil in uh, Brazil and talking about whether or not companies are doing better things or not. <laughs> uh, Google's saying um, they got this newest AI supercomputer that's going to beat NVIDIA. So I guess there's going to be a fight uh, in terms of like, you know, computing power, and stuff like that. Um, if I had to bet between uh, Google and NVIDIA, I'd probably go with Google. Uh, I'll be curious to you guys' thoughts in terms of like, hey, you know, who's the more dominant company? And I just think Google probably gets better people. Although it's funny when, when I was a kid, I remember it used to be like NVIDIA um, or ATI and like NVIDIA always had better marketing. Now, whether or not NVIDIA was always a better chip, I'd love to hear your opinion on that one. I'm not um, expert enough in computers to know, honestly, the difference between ATI uh, and, and NVIDIA. I just don't know. <laughs> I could tell you, um, but I just know that NVIDIA always had better marketing and I like their, their cool green color. So I was like, okay, I liked NVIDIA, but you know, who knows if it was really a better chip or not? Um, who knows? Um, and, uh, this, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> um, and, um, and, uh, this one has as well as, um, chat DBT, they, uh, were banned in, in, uh, in Italy on like the, here it's funny cause they hear that, um, this is a, uh, this headline was saying it was a temporary one. If you read other headlines, they're just saying like banned cause it sounds more exciting. Um, but I do think, uh, this is an interesting one. So basically, um, you know, chat GPT, are they accessing stuff they're not supposed to? And, and, you know, one of the things that is, was going on, this was earlier. Um, I think it was might have been a couple months ago you see in the headlines to where big companies like Microsoft and Amazon were banning it from their employees uh, because employees were essentially putting code into ChatGPT to for ChatGPT to you know correct said code. But what you're doing is you're putting in proper you know proprietary and and private uh, stuff in there that you shouldn't be. Uh, and then the AI is like learning from you. Oh, thank you for the code, you know, Mister uh, or Mrs. Uh, Amazon employee. Thank you for the code, Miss Mister Mrs. You know Google employee that kind of stuff. So. Um, I think we're still kind of wrestling on what to do uh, with AI and ChatGPT, and um, we'll keep tracking these stories uh, as well. So anyway, um, love to hear your thoughts on any one of these things. I do appreciate your time, and um, I'll catch you in the next video.